But this, this is your uh, Heath tea tree again. Your prickly tea tree there. Your bundled guinea flower. Juvenile banksia, bracken fern. They've had a preview of the different types of species and learning some of them this morning. And uh, so they've got a primer of all the main species to look at and any other special species, they can call it species A, B, C and D and so forth. And then take a sample if it's plentiful under our permit. And then um, we can identify every plant we have there. And they can use that information plus um, and look at the more, combine that with the more specialist information and data we got this morning to uh, get a very good idea what the vegetation is like throughout this uh, block. Sedges have edges and rushes around. Sedges have edges and rushes around. So what's this one that Neville has? One little thing to look for here is the, with the sedges, is the the roundness on there and there's one called concavum which means like that that's lepidospermia concavum Whereas they've this already one, been looking at that today have it's they? called sandhill sword sedge that's right they have <laughs> and this one um, has got convex on both sides and that i believe um, that's the pithy saw sedge, isn't it? But right, is that the one you're talking about? That one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so it grows pretty much taller, so you get a different form. But also, there's quite a marked difference in the in the geometry on the leaf. Um, well, one bag has been very lucky in that it has a lot of public land. Perhaps because in 1909 it started as a, a state town and the, a lot of the areas were undermined by the coal mine, so it ha they haven't been built on. These areas have lapsed since the closing of the mine in 1968, and they have grazing leases on them. Uh, we have a project to encircle one thaggy with seven different blocks of land, um, that, that is public land, um, and revegetate and have ephemeral and or wetlands in them so that we can have walking and cycling tracks for better health for our citizens and to keep um, a green belt round one thaggy. We do get quite a few birds coming across from Tasmania to here. Um, for example, yesterday we saw blue winged parrots. Um, the flame robins come over uh, to overwinter here and uh, a flock of 50 were found um, nearby um, on the edge of the paddocks. Our park rangers don't have the time to be able to do that, the intricate little things. They have a, a large area to manage, so with a specialist group like this, it's, it's adding information all the time. Of course, we've done these ongoing surveys now for probably at least five or six years, and that ongoing is probably the only data you get uh, along with the valuable data, I must acknowledge fully uh, Peter Homan, who's a, you know, one of uh, Victoria's foremost uh, small mammal um, survey experts here working. So that's a white-footed dunnart. <laughs> so you can hold marsupials by the base of the tail, but you can't do that with rodents. Do they uh, a tick in his ear or something? Really? Or her ear? Mm. That white thing. Mm. Does so it this. Oh, sort of whitish. The funny thing about it is the common dunnart's got much whiter feet. We certainly have appreciated the input from yeah. Peter Homan and uh, that's worked really well and yeah. his contact with RMIT and yeah. the way that association has developed has helped, helped us enormously. Yeah. Uh, this project in particular, the Rifle Range Wetland that we're at at the moment, was um, all the work of the local volunteer groups, Friends of Wanthaggy Heathlands, the uh, Coastal Plains Land Care Group and the 130 Seed Bank. A lot of community groups have worked together. And once again, you know, thanks for the work that your oh. students do as volunteers. Oh, sure Most important. I think we'll knock off, folks. Lightning. Here it comes.
We got a good good haul this morning with the rain last night. They must be more active or something. Yes. Mm. Let's see that part of it. Oh, we've got the skink and quite a lot of frogs. What do you get over there, frogs? Two, two southern bullfrogs, both in buckets. Both in And one over there too. One over there. It's all through this section here. Swamp rats galore. They got they got very sharp front teeth. And if they want to bite you, they they will. You need to play the ukulele again. That's a that's a young male. Oh, again, yeah. too. Just maybe just show the feet again, too, Francis. So there's the dark, dark feet on top. And the other one on the other side. And too. bottom. Just get that one out. See if both together. And a short, short scaly tail, lightly the, furred. Uh, the features of the anatomy of the foot there. Well, it's got five, five digits. Mm -hmm. That's just probably. Um, Probably different from a marsupial foot yeah, too. Yeah, so a marsupial's got a marsupial thumb. Yep. Whereas rodents have just got you know, similar features to our feet. We're well, just a lot of rats. Advanced rats. Advanced rats. <laughs> he's in now. Oh, no, he's not. Is he? Oh. Let him go. Let him go. Let's let him go. Don't try and, don't try and grab him. Yes. He's fine. He's, he's gone. gone. Couple of years ago, one escaped uh, and it got onto my boot, and it just sort of sat there for a while. Went, huh? Where'd it go next? It was right on my boot. <laughs> oh, we got a baby. Oh, hang on. Sorry, sorry, everyone. Sorry, hang on. Where's my glasses? Where's my glasses? Where's my glasses? Hang on. Hang on. It's a male. That's testes. Yeah. It's a male. It's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>